rock stars. Welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt and to live with confidence. Merry Christmas Eve, everyone, to all of y'all who are celebrating along with me. I'm so excited to be with you guys. Y'all, it's been a whirlwind, hasn't it? This last week. Oh my gosh. I know many of you are inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. And if you're not already, you totally should be. Uh, but for those of you who already are, you know kind of the ups and downs of this last week and just how much has been going on. We've had plans move around. Oh, good. I just got the notification that I'm live. So I know things are working. Oh, hang on. Got to turn myself off. So otherwise, it'll be, it'll be too loud. Anyway. So thank you so much for being here with me. If you are able to be here live, I love that. If you are catching the replay, it is that time of year. I'm going to jump over just to Facebook real quick just to see who is live here with me. Say hi with, to me in the comments if you are here. I want to be sure I greet you. I think uh, Rob and Dan, did I see you guys are here? Yes, 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 maybe. Oh, let me unpin this so you guys can find me. And notice that Sweet Hubster got my bit, my like webcam working again. Let's see how the resolution is on that. Um, I'm chattering for just, oh good, it looks pretty good actually. I'm chattering for just a second because I wanna make sure that you guys have time to get on. Yay, hey Patsy, I'm so glad you're here. Hey Robin, hey Winifred. Lynn, how are you? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's already like truly Christmas Eve over in England, Lynn. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Oh my heavens. So one of my friends, April, who's in town for the holiday. So she lives in Zambia, but on her way home, she got to spend like three days in London and y'all, I about died of jealousy. I just, uh, so good. So good. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Marie. Hey, Stacy. Kate, you're gonna, yes, Kate, which you don't have to drop your feed dogs. Spoiler, like just so you know. Um, okay. So real quick, um, I was going to say this for the end, but I'm actually going to hit this announcement at the beginning and at the end because I think it's really important. And Kate, since you mentioned free motion quilting, we're going to jump in for a hot second. So I have a really big, important announcement. And then we're going to talk through tension on our machine for free motion quilting. Um, and then I will repeat the announcement for anyone who joins us in the meanwhile. But here's the thing, guys. I have been telling you for weeks and weeks and weeks that Free Motion Quilting Academy was going to reopen on January 2nd. And y'all, I have made an executive decision and we're pushing that back a month, okay? Um, honestly, when I originally made the decision about um, Free Motion Quilting Academy opening on January 2nd, I didn't know about Iceland. Um, and just a lot has happened, like with that trip and just in general. Um, so I'm gonna ask that you give me grace and I'm gonna give myself grace and we are gonna wait and open Free Motion Quilting Academy in February. So that means a couple of things. First of all, it allows all of us to get a few weeks between us and the holidays before we dive into learning a new skill, all right? I know that sometimes the beginning of January is almost as hectic as the holidays as we're undecorating and trying to like find place in our houses for all the new stuff we got and just trying to put our lives back together, get our kids back in school, et cetera. So originally we were gonna have registration at the beginning of January and class was going to start mid-January. I'm pushing that back one month so registration will be on start on February 1st and class will start mid-February. Exact start date like to be announced, okay? But, but I know some of you guys have been waiting and you are so, so, so excited. So there will be a flash sale slash early bird registration that starts on January 2nd for just a couple of days. For those of you who are like, I'm ready, I'm registering, I don't want to have to wait I don't want to like wait, like you spend my Christmas money and then not be able to sign up. I don't whatever, right? So if you know you're ready, you will have the opportunity to sign up on January 2nd, um, but class will not start till mid-February. We're just gonna give everybody a little bit of a breather. Um, I just realized I needed it and that I wasn't gonna show up with the energy for you guys that y'all deserve if I didn't allow myself that little bit of a break. So what that means, like I said, is there will still be an early bird registration and y'all, I said flash sale, it will be less expensive if you register January 2nd than if you register in February. I'm just gonna tell you right now. So if you've asked for Christmas money for the class, like you're gonna get a better deal by making a decision in January, okay? But then official registration will be in February, okay? So just know that 
and know that it's coming. I'm, I'm really, I'm so excited. And what I realized was I've had so much going on that like my excitement was not going to be at its fullest for this class. And I want that for you guys. I want that for our time together. Um, so anyway, that's the big announcement around free motion quilting Academy. If you want to make sure that you get the emails next week, about the flash sale, about early bird registration. Make sure that you are on the waiting list at stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ Academy. Okay. All right. So that all being said, and I'll recap that again at the end. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask them in the comments. And if I see them right away, I will go ahead and answer them. Um, if I see them in a hot second, I'll answer them at the end. Okay. So I just, I want you guys to be in the loop. Thank you for your grace and patience, both over the last few days. I've had multiple times where I've realized I've double booked myself. Um, but also just as I realized like, this isn't going to be what I want it to be for all of us, unless we push this back. So it'll be, it'll be better. We've just had a lot of guys. I literally sat down with my calendar and I realized that since the first week of October, we have had one normal week in our family. Every other week, either me or John or both of us has traveled or the kids have had half days at school. Yeah, that's accurate. So like we just have not, we've not had a normal week and life has been bananas. So anyway, that's the update around that. So thank you for your grace with me. Um, the class will be better for it. I can promise you that. Okay. All right. Let's jump in to our time together today guys i am so excited we are talking tension Oop. one of these days i'm going to get that right we are talking tension there's a lot of different kinds of tension but particularly today rather than you know relational tension or emotional tension let's talk about the tension on our machines for free motion quilting okay so in this mini workshop, I'm going to guide you through adjusting the tension on your sewing machine to create beautiful balanced stitches, avoid thread nests and broken thread, and remove the fear of breaking your machine by fooling with the tension. That's a big one, right, guys? Like how many of you have been scared of breaking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a result, you'll have a smoother, more enjoyable quilting experience. This is the big bear, guys. Like this, this is the bear. Oh, I don't want to play the game yet. Hang on. I'm going to get this to where I can see your comments because I want to know, I want to know your thoughts on this big bear. Let me get my volume down. Hello. Hello. Okay. So this is the big bear of free motion quilting, right? We're scared. Our machine is going to break. We're going to throw out the timing. Needles are going to break thread nests everywhere. And God forbid, I have to spend hours and hours on picking. We've all been there, right? So let's play a little bit of a game around our anxiety of adjusting tension. Give me a like big eyed and pick the emotion of your choosing guys. Cause I realized after I made this slide deck, I picked kind of obscure emojis, but you know, give me like some big eyes in the comments or just give me a comment. If you're worried that you'll mess up your machine for good, if you adjust the tension, this is the like, I'm gonna sue. Hey babe. Um, I'm going to hit a button and the whole thing's going to go up in flames right? Or it'll never run again. It'll never stitch. It'll never piece nothing. It's done. It's over, right? So give me some reactions if that's you. Or give me, you know, an angry face in the comments. If you've ever had gross thread issues while quilting, this includes, but is not limited to, thread nests, not nests, hmm, broken thread, spending hours on picking, or having to say swear words because you're angry about your tension, all right? Oh my gosh, Mitzi, I hear you, girl. Kate's on here. Kate knows the time I've spent spent picking. It's just because I love you, Kate, that I did all that picking. <laughs> it was Kate's quilt. It was Kate's quilt that was the culprit. I mean, it was something with my machine, but whatever. Yeah, we've all been there, right? So as you can see, as some of these comments are coming in, you're not alone in being nervous or frustrated about your tension. <coughs> like I said, this is the big bear for some reason. The good news is, <coughs> excuse me, the good news is, guys, I've spent a lot of time messing up tension, and I've learned a lot about it as a result. So let's walk through the hows, whys, wherefores, and how tos of tension, okay? Learning how to confidently adjust your sewing machine tension improves the quality and aesthetics of your quilting, i.e., your free motion quilting looks better, right? but it also creates a more enjoyable quilting experience, taking this huge stressor off your plate, right? It's something you have to be faithful about, as I am reminded every once in a while when I become less than faithful about it. But 
on the whole, just having some understanding about how tension works, how we adjust it, excuse me, is an absolutely enormous step in the right direction. I don't know why I'm like coughing and hiccuping and all the things just forgive. Maybe it's too much coffee. I did drink a lot of coffee this morning. So let's start by setting our machines up for success. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about a lot of things, including the care and keeping of our machines. Um, I'm going to reference some of that as we're going through. And if you were not with us for those many workshops, I do encourage you to go back and check those out. Okay. But before you begin adjusting your tension, let's rule out as many things as possible. Right. So this is, you know, how in science, we do a science project like in middle school, that's very important. And it continues to be important beyond middle school. But I feel like, you know, middle school science fair, right, guys, one variable, right? You want to get everything as stable as possible. And you're testing one variable. What happens if I play with this one thing? I have six white carnations and they're all in three inches of water. What happens if I make that water different colors? right? The carnations become different colors, but right, we're messing with one variable, right? We're not also going to have, this one has water, this one has sugar, this one has seven up, this one has plant food, and we're going to see how they change colors and whether or not they live or die. There's no and here, right? We want a single variable once we're adjusting our tension. So it's kind of the final thing, okay? Let's see, let me check on y'all real quick. Yes, okay, and that's totally fair. And yes, Denise, that's a great tip. Yes, yes, yes. Mitzi, you got this, girl. You got this. Okay. Keep all those comments and questions. They're lovely. I'm going to circle back and comment more fully in a minute. So eliminating all these other variables is going to include making sure your bobbin race is cleaned out. Take your needle plate off. Really get down in there with a brush or a pipe cleaner and pull the lint out, right? Is your bobbin seated correctly in the bobbin case? Make sure everything's threaded right. Does your thread up need to come off the bobbin clockwise or counterclockwise? Did you catch all the little bits and bobs of your machine when you threaded it? Do you have a fresh needle inserted? Is your foot securely attached? And also, because this is relevant, has your machine been serviced recently, right? And that's like in the last year. Have you had a standard service performed on your machine, okay? Because as we discussed, it does need to go to the spa periodically, even when things are running well because of the level of deep cleaning that can happen with a professional, okay? So remove all of those things. And again, we've talked about this very recently, but if you were not here for that or if you need a refresher, here's the link to go check that out, okay? Stringofstory.com forward slash blog slash sewing machine care. Also, if you just go to stringofstory.com and you search like sewing machine, it's going to come up in the hits. Okay. So if you need a review, I got you. Now that we've made sure that our machine is all set up and ready for success, let's talk about the tension basics. So you have an idea of what's going on with your machine. Sewing machine stitches are made by twisting two threads together. You have the top thread of your machine that comes down through the needle and you have the bobbin thread that comes up from the bobbin race. Okay. And the way that the sewing machine makes a stitch is these two threads cross each other and are twisted together. That's the of the bobbin race, which it actually I think does that twice, right? But that's what's happening when your bobbin race spins is it's putting a twist in these threads. And it's, um, I mean, really literally think about two threads being twisted together, but each of those twists is falling inside your fabric, okay? And when your tension is adjusted correctly, that twist where they interlock like that, that falls in the batting. And the result is that on the top of your quilting and the bottom of your quilting, the stitches look the same. That's the goal, right? So on domestic sewing machines though, when I say adjusting the tension, even though we have two threads going, I'm referring to your top tension. Now, this is an industrial machine. I have my long arm over behind you. We're going to talk in a minute about a couple of things that are different with long arms, but just know on your domestic machine, unless you are like a certified technician, right? Don't fool with your bobbin tension. Okay. There are screws and stuff in there that you could don't do that. All right. We don't do that on your typical domestic machine. We're just going to be turning the knobs or if you have um, digital tension, like I do pressing the buttons that adjust the top, tension. Okay. There's tension discs inside the head of this right here on the front. And that's what we're fooling with. We're not actually messing with what's here. Again, one variable at a time. 
okay? So we leave this stable and we just fool with this top thread, okay? One-sided tug of war. So if we've got our two threads, we're not, we're not playing with both and flipping this back and forth, right? We're just adjusting one side or the other by either pulling it this way or pushing it that way. And by pushing, I mean loosening it so they're slack, right? Okay. Tightening the tension is generally, not generally, it is consistently associated with a higher number on your tension dial or a higher number on your screen display. Okay, tighter tension again is on this top thread. There is more tension on this top thread. Those, those discs are tighter together. Loosening the tension is associated with a lower number. So screwing that knob counterclockwise, reducing the number on your digital display. And that again is creating more slack so this thread flows more easily, all right? When tension is properly adjusted, the stitches on the top and back are gonna look the same. Oh, I have a note here to put pictures and I didn't put pictures for you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, but dots or eyelashes demonstrate that the top tension is either too tight or too loose. And let me talk you through that for a hot second, okay? So if you have um, your stitching on your practice sandwich, right? You're adjusting your tension. If you can see eyelashes on the back of the quilt, so that means that literally the top thread has pulled through and your bottom thread is you know, twisted through, but you can actually see the tugs on the back, then that top tension is too loose. Too much of the thread is getting pulled to the back of the quilt. You're gonna wanna tighten it up to pull, again, those twists that are showing, we wanna pull those into the batting of the quilt. All right, now that's a pretty extreme case of loose tension. You have a couple other things that can happen as well. You could have simply just little nubs of the top thread showing, so the bobbin thread, you know, is threaded through and there's just, you can kind of feel it with your hand, the little nubbins of the top thread on the back of the quilt. And it, when that happens, the back thread will look like it's floating. So it's just like laid on the quilt and it's kind of tacked in place. All right. I call this a floater. That, my dear, is like prime territory to get snagged on something, pop that thread and all your quilting comes out. Right. Which is like, that's a horror story waiting to happen, basically, right? Now, this can also happen on the top. Now, it's very uncommon to get eyelashing on the top of your quilt. Usually, the top thread will break before you will get eyelashes on the top of the quilt, okay? But you can get that nubbin effect, where, again, that top thread is kind of floating up above the surface, and the bobbin thread is peeking through just a tiny little bit, all right? Um, dots are where you can't quite feel it, but you can kind of see it. This is pretty rare that you're gonna be able to see it but not feel it as far as like one thread poking through to one side or the other. Something to kind of watch out for though is that especially if you're using different colors of thread on the top and bottom, your tension can actually be set properly but you can also see the other thread just in the needle hole. There's nothing wrong with the tension on that but it doesn't look super great. So like just keep that in mind if you're playing around with different colors top and bottom that you could have proper tension, but still have like an aesthetics issue, okay? Hey, Lydia! All right. Um, the, there was another thought that I had that I was gonna share with you guys, and it just escaped me. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and start dropping them in the comments, and I'll get to them in just a hot second. I promised you that we would talk a little bit about a note on the long arm and industrial machines. Now, when you're adjusting tension on a domestic machine, a sit-down machine, you're gonna have usually a practice sandwich, so fabric, batting, fabric, right? Not usually a real quilt. And you're gonna be doing just some general loopy meander swirls, easy kind of free motion quilting motifs to check your tension, right? You wanna make sure you have some points because eyelashes tend to show up at like the hard point of a swirl or a square um, and also some good curves, right? Because those are areas where floaters tend to show up. So having some good movement to make sure that no matter um, how like tight or quick you're changing directions that your tension holds. Now, it gets a little trickier on a long arm because uh, on a long arm, you're going to want to make sure you have room on both sides of your quilt top, like you have extra batting and backing that you can lay some scrap fabric and test your tension over there. All right. So other than that, though, the principles really are the same, right? You're going to be practicing on scrap fabric and checking the top and back of your quilt to make sure that your tension is balanced and adjusting accordingly. And I do recommend that you check when you're getting started 
that you check when you change bobbins. Um, if you step away from your machine for a, any period of time, right? Like if you turn your machine off or like, I've got a quilt over there that I've been in the middle of quilting for like a while and I haven't worked on it in a couple of weeks, it's just sitting. So when I turn that machine back on and start quilting, the first thing I'm gonna do is pop my head underneath and make sure my tension is still good, right? So you want to check your tension often. I really cannot emphasize that enough. Anytime I get lazy about this, I pay for it dearly, okay? Check your tension often. But the principles are the same in terms of higher number, tighter top tension, lower number, looser top tension, and how you're wanting to get those stitches balanced. Here are a couple of things to keep in mind though. First, you're likely gonna use a bigger needle. So I usually recommend on domestic starting your free motion quilting with a 14. Um, but if you're working on an industrial or a long arm, you're probably gonna be starting with a 16, okay? The higher stitch count, the speed of the machine means you're gonna need a bigger needle so that you have that bigger eye so your thread can hold up, okay? You're also gonna wanna have a toe gauge on hand, which let me grab mine to show you guys. This is the bobbin case tension gauge, a tow gauge. Hey, Kimberly, here we go. So this is actually used to check the bobbin tension on industrial style machines, okay? I'm not gonna give you guys a full tutorial on this right at the moment, um, but just know it looks like this. The bobbin casing goes in here and you can wrap your thread to read the bobbin tension, okay? And for my um, industrial machine and my long arm, I usually like it to be right about 200 or so, right? I don't want it a lot tighter than that. I don't want it a lot looser than that. Um, and there's a screw on the side of the bobbin housing that I can use to adjust that. So again, this is different than a domestic machine where I do not recommend that you fool with the bobbin, all right? But if you have an industrial machine or a long arm, you will need to know how to use a toe gauge. It's super easy. And when I remember we talked at the beginning about setting our machine up for success of making sure our bobbin race was cleaned out and all of that, then you will check your bobbin tension right before you start fooling with your top tension, right? You'll get everything cleaned out. If it needs to be oiled, you'll get it threaded, new needle, all of the things. You'll check your bobbin tension and then you'll adjust your top tension because again, we're eliminating variables, right? making sure there's not lint or junk in there, making sure the needle is sharp, making sure the foot and the needle are seated correctly, making sure the bobbin tension is where it should be, and then playing tug of war with this top tension, okay? Oh, that's super interesting, Denise, I love that. Um, and then as I mentioned right at the top of this section, finally, if you're quilting on a frame, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have room on the sides to test your tension. This is super important. It does require a little bit of forethought, and if you quilt for others, it requires asking them to leave you that space, right? But trust me, it's worth it to have that room to play over there and to make sure that your tension is doing what it needs to do. Because otherwise, if you start playing on your quilt and the tension is off, you have to unpick, right? The beauty of doing something on scrap fabric is you don't have to unpick it if it's not perfect. All right. So I mentioned if you had questions to go ahead and start dropping them in the comments. If you're loving this, finding this helpful, do you please give me a heart so that I can see that. But let me pop over to where I can see your questions. Um, Cause I think this is, this is kind of the big bad wolf of free motion quilting technical stuff, if you will. And I wanna make sure that you leave our time together today, not feeling so anxious about it. All right, um, let's see. So Denise made a point right at the beginning that if you use the same thread top and bottom, it is easier. Denise, I find that to be true as well. My go-to always and forever is Aurafil 50 weight. All right. Had a friend this week that was like, Holly Ann, my machine's skipping stitches. I thought I had everything adjusted. I don't know what to do. And I was like, are you using Aurafil? She was not. Guess what solved the problem? Just saying. I know I'm biased because I love it, but I also like love it because it's the best. So anyway, um, so yes, I do find using the same thread top and bottom makes this a lot easier. It's not impossible to use different threads top and bottom. You just, you're gonna run the risk of having more issues. It's harder to get an even tug of war when the players are not the same weight, right? Like think of, um, I mean like, okay, John and I are pretty close in size. Like me and my dad playing tug of war, like he's got a lot of inches on me, probably gonna crush me. Right. And so if you get a thicker thread up here on top, you got a thinner thread down in the bottom. It's going to be a lot harder to get those guys balanced. OK. 
So yes, and that's a legitimate fear of not wanting to take an expensive machine in for service. Here's the deal though. Most of the time, like tension issues are not gonna cause your machine to need service, okay? The exception is gonna be if you somehow manage to like break a needle, right? And throw out your timing and you've got a piece of needle floating around in there, but that is so rare, right? If you're following these prep steps that I took you through, you're adjusting your tensions, paying attention as you go, Make sure your presser foot is down when you start quilting. Make sure you only turn your wheel towards you. If you follow these kind of basic steps, which that presser foot down one, that sounds like a no brainer, but nothing will give you thread nests faster than getting distracted and not putting your foot down, right? So some of those basic things, the chances of your machine really needing service are like almost zero. It's more a factor of like patience and persistence as you learn how to fiddle with your machine's tension and get it right right? Learning what needles your machine prefers. Does it have a preferred thread? Things like that. Okay. Um, oh, interesting, Lydia. I've never done it that way, but that could definitely work. So I'm impressed that you can get your bobbin thread to come to the top without the top thread breaking. That's really surprising to me. Um, I love that observation about your machine, Denise. Love it. Love it. Um, Lydia, great question. So, um, when I got my long arm, it was with it, but I know that sewingmachine.com has them. And I think you could probably order them online, right? Um, there's a decent chance Amazon has them too, for that matter. You know what? I can solve this problem and find out for us. Let's see. Amazon has them, yeah, which, if you want a link, hit me up and I can get you an affiliate link for that. Um, hey, Robin, Merry Christmas, dear. Hey, Katie, Merry Christmas. Yes, okay, you have a sit down long arm, Jan. When you're putting together a practice sandwich, it should be the same materials batting. Okay, so ideally, yes. And it, it's the same thing of these like variables, right? Now, it does not need to be perfect. So like if you don't have leftover fabric from the quilt that you were just working on or you don't want to scribble all over the fabric you were just working with, just making sure that you're using quilting cotton, right? So like if your quilt is made of quilting cotton, I would not use like flannel or muslin for your practice sandwich to test your tension, right? That's a totally different ball game, right? And if your quilt was, you know, home deck fabric or flannel, I wouldn't use cotton to test it, right? So I would make sure it's the same type of fabric. It doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same fabric. Um, the exception to this would potentially be if you're working with like art gallery is a very different hand from a lot of other brands. So if you're working with a fabric that has a substantially thicker or thinner hand, like batiks would be another example of this, and you're having tension issues, um, I would seriously consider making yourself like a swatch of that fabric, right? If you're not having issues with it, then you don't necessarily have to fool with it, right? The other thing to keep in mind is batting. Cotton batting, poly batting, two very different things, right? The loft factor alone makes a big difference with how much margin you have for where that twist can be inside the quilt, right? So I would say that on um, the fabric side, try to just make sure it's the same basic type of fabric. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same brand, same line, whatever, right? Don't overthink this. But on batting, try to keep the batting the same. I do think that that's useful um, because, again, you're just eliminating variables and you want to have this process be as smooth as possible that once you get it set for your practice sandwich, that when you move over to your quilt, there's not continued issues. But this does bring up a very good point that when you set your tension with your practice sandwich and you begin quilting on your proper quilt, make sure you check your tension again. So what I mean by that is start quilting according to the quilting plan that you've made. But after a, you know, a little section, not a big section, we don't want to pick out a bunch, but after a little section, flip it over and check it and make sure that it translated from the practice sandwich to the proper quilt, that your tension is held steady and still looks good, right? That is a good, good and do that often. Do that often. That's, again, one of the like easy downfalls of free motion quilting as you get going, you hit a groove and you don't check your tension for four hours. And then you realize that somewhere around like the first hour and a half, something went wrong. And now you have two and a half hours worth of quilting that has to be unpicked and it sucks. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh no, Lynn. 
The elf ran off with your Orville, the naughty elf. Oh my gosh, guys. I went out to breakfast with friends this morning. And um, so I we went to Maple Street Biscuit. And if you've been to Maple Street, then you know that in order to like call your order, they have a question of the day. And they like put in your answer to the question as like what they holler when your order's ready. So I get up there and they're like, what would you name your elf on the shelf? And I was like, the devil. <laughs> and she was like, you have strong feelings about Elf on the Shelf. I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Things creepy. Anyway, we don't do Elf on the Shelf. I don't like Elf on the Shelf. Though I understand it a little bit more after going to Iceland because the Elf is a lot more like Icelandic Santa Clauses. Iceland has 13 Santa Clauses, just for the record. So anyway, I digress. Uh, Terry, it's a TOA gauge, T-O-W-A. Let me put it in. There you go. Um, which... I'm not going to be able to get to an affiliate link quickly enough, but remind me and I can give you guys one later. Let's see. Denise, your, gen uh, your Janome will free motion cool just about any thread brand as long as you use a specific Janome purple tip needle. That's pretty cool. That's, pre that's pretty nice. I would rather take my machine like being particular about needles than thread because that's easier to hold steady. I like that. That's nice. All right. So today I actually have a little something different for you guys. So if you're excited to know more about tension, but nervous, I have a surprise guys. I'm so excited about this. Getting your tension right has never been easier with this wonderful new one sheet quickie freebie guide that I have for you guys. So I paired up with a friend of mine who's a graphic designer and to put together a brand new tension guide. For you. So if you, if you're, you know, if you're part of the OG, then you've seen the previous tension guide. And y'all, I guarantee you this one is a strong level up. So this guide is totally free. If you pop over to my blog, here is the link, stringofstory.com forward slash blog slash tension how to. You'll put in your email address and I will drop it straight to your inbox. Y'all, I'm so excited about this guide. Um, it's going to be your easy, like, tuck it in the drawer of your sewing machine, like, what do I need to keep in mind when I am working on tension cheat sheet? So I have that for you guys today. Um, and as I mentioned at the top, if you have more, Sue, I'm so excited about this guide. Like, look at this, guys. I'm pumped. So pumped. So make sure you hop over and grab that. There's a link in the caption of this video, too, so you can hop over and get it. Um, and I just put this together because I know that tension is the big bad wolf of free motion quilting. And I know that it's something that it's something that I still have issues with. Tension issues never go away. You just learn to manage them, right? Tension is a persnickety thing. Machines can be persnickety. Some, I mean, and y'all, here's the other thing. Full disclosure, there is a time and a place to simply turn your machine off and walk away if you're having tension problems. Sometimes everybody just needs a rest and maybe a glass of wine, okay? So I was also, I was talking to somebody else about that this week, but I told her, I was like, here's some things I think you could try, but honestly, please don't try them tonight. Like you need to just let it rest because sometimes you come back and like, it's not an issue anymore. I can't explain that to you, but sometimes you're working with a machine or a quilt and the tension issues are just unbelievable. You turn it off, you go sleep on it, you come back the next morning and it's all fine. Everything's working. I have no, it's the gremlins, the gremlins. So yes, anyway, I'm excited to have this new guide for you guys because I know that this is something that comes up a lot. Um, and this does have some pictures on you on it for you guys since I apparently did not add them to that slide today. Um, so ee, yeah, I'm excited. Um, but also before I let you guys go, um, just to circle back to the announcement that I made at the top. And if you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll hit them after I make this announcement again. Um, but just to make sure that all y'all heard, Free Motion Quilting Academy registration has moved from January 2nd to February 1st. I just decided we all need a little bit of a breather between the holidays and tackling the beautiful but also substantial task of learning free motion quilting. I 100% want 2020 to be the year that you learn how to confidently and skillfully quilt your own quilts. And I just came to this realization that in order for you to do that with the greatest success and for me to show up as the teacher you need, we all just need a little bit of a break between Christmas and starting class. So here's what that means. If you are already on the waiting list, or if you add yourself to the waiting list in the next few days, then there will be a flash sale for Free Motion Quilting Academy. Um, slash early bird registration on January 2nd. And it will be less expensive to buy the class January 2nd than it will be in February, 
okay? And it'll, yeah, it's, it's a better deal. So if you know you're in, if you've asked for Christmas money to buy this class, if you're just pumped to be able to be like, I'm in baby, this is my year, then you will have that opportunity at the beginning of January, okay? So there will, there will be a little flash sale slash early bird registration that starts on January 2nd. The way to be sure you know about that is to be on the Free Motion Quilting Academy waiting list, okay? So stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ Academy, all right? If you either are not sure yet or you, for whatever reason, are seeing this but don't want to be on the waiting list or maybe you're catching the replay of this and it's after that early bird window, official Free Motion Quilting Academy registration will open February 1st. Y'all, I'm working on a brand new masterclass for you guys that will be part of registration being open, and I am pumped about it. Um, and that's part of why I wanted to wait is because that is not quite ready yet. I want to give you this shiny new thing, and this will be a free masterclass, guys. I'm super excited, super excited. So anyway, that will be coming, and um, that also means that class will not start until mid-February, an exact start date to be announced. But just go ahead and kind of mark your calendars in general. Middle-ish of February is when we'll actually start Free Motion Quilting Academy. All right. There will be more details coming, but that's the relevant stuff that I want to make sure you guys know. And again, for those of you who have been eagerly anticipating this, thank you for the grace to allow me to move this. Um, it will be better for all of us. I feel very confident about that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, turn it off. Say nice things. Pet it. Turn it on. Yes, Sue. Yes and amen. Uh, change the orientation of the thread. Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah, mine also likes vertical, but I have a, I have a singer that changes its mind daily. So there's also that, um, failure to fetch. De oh, Jan, you are so sweet. Denise, I don't know. I just tested it. Send me an email, Denise. Okay. And if anyone else is having issues, email me here. I'll put my email right here. Okay. If you're for some reason having issues, send me an email. Thank you, Denise. I tested it this morning. I don't know what's going on. Um, so anyway, and Jan, thank you. I'm very excited for Free Motion Quilting Academy to be coming back. I'm also excited to get a little bit of a breather between now and then so that we can just truly, truly enjoy it. So Merry Christmas, my loves. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope this has encouraged you about tension. Um, it takes a little bit of the fear factor out. We talk about tension all the time over on the Quilting Rockstars. So if you're not yet in the Quilting Rockstars community Facebook group, do come over there and join us. Uh, have a wonderful holiday today and tomorrow. For those of you who are in Quilting Outside the Lines, I will see you Saturday afternoon for our workshop together. That's going to be a big time too. Um, and I hope I'll see all of you Saturday night inside the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group for social hour. We will finally be having a social hour, guys. I'm chomping at the bit. It's just been a crazy couple of weeks. All right. Merry Christmas, my dears. I will see you very, very soon.